Today we're going to be talking about lathe tool holding and tools. And this is the first part, just enough to get you going uh, in your facing operations and basic turning operations on the lathe. So the essential question here is we're trying to understand how the tool geometry uh, affects lathe operation, or how do we mount the tool to do a lathe operation. Our objectives for this, uh, there's a few objectives. First, what we want to be sure and do is demonstrate understanding of the tool holding devices. What different devices are available to us and how do we use those? I want you to under, have a basic understanding of cutting tools and cutting tool geometry. And this will be very, very basic. We're just going to recognize a right hand, left hand, and neutral tool. And then the third thing I want you to do is I want to basically refresh and remind you of uh, the uh, lathe safety precautions. And that's kind of where we're going to start. So these are things that we've done when we did our uh, work holding uh, lab as we talked about some of these safety requirements to run the lathe. And remember, anytime you're using the lathe, you want to have safety glasses on. You need to have work shoes, so nothing that's open-toed anywhere near a lathe. Uh, there's a couple reasons. One is the brake. Uh, it is, uh, presses down and it can pinch your foot very severely uh, if you're standing uh, with one foot under it when you step on it. Uh, other reason is there's obviously sharp chips coming off the lathe. Uh, the lathe produces a significant entanglement hazard, so you have to roll up your sleeves and secure any loose clothing. I always recommend you wear an apron tied behind your back for this operation, and you've removed all jewelry, rings, secured long hair uh, by tying it back whenever you're running the lathe. Next, we always want to be sure that we keep all the guards in place. So uh, our lathes are set up with several safety interlocks on the uh, guard over the chuck is the primary one. You want to be sure that that is in place and nobody has tampered with it to make it run with the guard up. We're never going to take a piece of stock and stick it out the left side of the lathe. That can be very hazardous, can get it out of balance very fast. Now these last few are your own behavior, and the first thing I can uh, not overemphasize enough is stay focused. There's a lot of moving parts in the lathe, and it's easy to get distracted and lose track of what's going on and have a collision or an incident on your lathe. Always stay on your controls at all times. Never, ever, ever leave the lathe running and step away from it. I recommend that you always do your own setup. Don't trust your friend to do the setup correctly for you, so you set up your tools, you set up your part. We're going to cut fairly slow, below the maximum recommended speed of the uh, cutting tool. Uh, and you do want to go uh, fairly slow when you're first learning how to do this because you can break the tools. They do uh, shatter. The carbide can shatter on them. You can also have collisions uh, if you're not paying attention you're trying to go too fast. The last two are pretty common sense, but fight the urge to ever reach in towards the spinning workpiece. Now that includes to clear something off of the spinning workpiece or a chip. A chip is very, very hazardous, very sharp. Uh, so we only want to remove chips with a brush. Uh, and you always want to have the lathe stopped when you're removing chips. If for some reason a chip is entangled in a tool, stop your lathe, grab a pliers from the toolbox, and remove the chip with the pliers. So that's a recap of our safety. So we talk about a tool holding device, we're really just talking about something that holds a cutting tool. And remember, on a lathe, the cutting tool is held stationary and the part is spun in the chuck. And in order to make this uh, a smooth cut, it has to rigidly hold the tool. There's quite a bit of pressure on the tool while it's cutting, so we need to basically dampen any vibration uh, into the compound rest. So we have to hold it securely. And then the other thing we really want it to be is easy to change, because we'll interchange tools quite frequently on a lathe. So when we talk about tool holding devices, we're really going to talk about three different tool holding devices, and we're going to focus on the quick change post, which is what we use. So the first one is really a, a throwback to uh, years past, and that is a uh, rocker post tool holder. Uh, pretty old, not very common uh, in an industrial setting. The second one that we'll talk about is a quick change post. That's the most common now, and that's what we use also. We use an Aloris-style wedge quick-change post. 
Third one, you'll still, still, still see a lot of these are indexable posts or a post that can index or rotate around and hold multiple tools. So the first one is a rocker type, uh, really set up on old lays, old time, South Bend lays. They look kind of like this. And what you'll see it is it actually has a uh, bottom plate down here and this bottom plate is rounded and a wedge that sits in there. And that wedge allows you to adjust the height of the tool it's held down with pressure on the top nut where my cursor is flashing. The tool holder itself is this large steel piece. And in the end is a small piece of high speed steel, or it may be a piece of uh, steel with a carbide tip on it. This is a custom ground high speed steel tool held down with another screw. Uh, they were good in their day. Uh, they're not used very often now, and the problem with them is the adjustability of them. So they're not real repeatable, and the tool slides back and forth in the post. The rocker can set the angle on the tool, and the top knot holds the whole thing in place. Now, they're also not incredibly secure. So they're rarely used on a modern lathe. They're kind of cheap. They're inaccurate uh, unless you're highly skilled, and they're very hard to make repeatable. They also are a little more flexible than our current modern tool holders, and they shift, and my final comment is, uh, for an industrial setting, it's kind of ick. We don't do it anymore. Here's those components that I talked about. So there's a base that goes into the T-nut slot on the uh, compound rest, and then on top of that base, the tool post is resting into that base. And then there's a ring, a rocker, the tool post itself, and a method to tighten it. Not super common. Well, this is about the 80% solution, I'm going to say. And this is a quick change post. It's a dovetail wedge mount. In other words, when you move this to lock, pulling the lever back, it expands a wedge which holds the tool holder down and it's highly repeatable because this top nut here can be adjusted for the height of the tool. So I can take the tool out and drop it back in and it goes right back into its same place. Uh, pull it to lock it, push it to unlock it. Now these have a mounting position on the uh, left hand side of the wedge as well as on the front of the wedge. And we'll use both of those as we go through our projects. Very, very common, uh, probably the most common tool holder you'll see in a lathe. Now, for a quick change tool post like this, you always got to check that you have the height of the tool set. And I'm going to show you one way to do it in our shop that's pretty easy. We're going to compare it to the point on a center. So we'll do that towards the end. We want to adjust the height. I've got a little video and set that height so that the tool is, ends up right at the middle of the lathe. So I can put a lot of tools into this style tool holder. Uh, some of the tools holders that you're seeing over here, this is a knurling tool holder, a pinch style, scissor style knurling tool holder, uh, just a standard generic tool holder, a cutoff tool holder, a couple different size tool holders, some grooving, a pressure knurler, uh, we've got a variety of tool holders that all slide onto that wedge tool post, which you'll use. Now, the third and the last tool holder that we're going to talk about here is an indexable tool post. Now, this is nothing more than a tool post where you can set multiple tools in. So you'll see I've got a tool sitting in this position. I've got it looks like a boring bar over here. And I've got a third tool in that position. And what we can do is move this lever and then rotate the whole tool post. So this will hold four tools. Uh, they're fairly common in production lathes uh, where you'd set up your tooling and you just run the same operations over and over and over. Uh, and these can be combined with quick change tool posts also. So I can put an indexable tool holder that has dovetail fixtures for quick change tool posts. So these are pretty common in industrial settings. And this is an example of a uh, of a uh, indexable wedge holder. So this actually is holding four different quick change tool posts on an indexable holder. Okay, so what do we cut metal with? 
And the answer here is we can cut metal with metal. But the metal that we use as the cutting tool is referred to as high speed steel. And all that it is is a steel with a very high carbon content and it's very hard steel. So the way you make a tool out of this, and you do make your own tools typically out of these, is you grind it on a tool grinder. We grind it to shape. We won't do much of that because that's largely overcome by the low cost, high repeatability, and high accuracy of carbide tools. Now when we talk about the material for a carbide tool, I can have a brazed carbide tool. This is just a little piece of carbide which is welded to the end or brazed to the end of a steel post. We don't use those either. Uh, and we don't use those because we use an insert-based carbide tool. So an insert-based carbide tool looks like this. So these gold pieces here, and most of ours are gold or black that you'll see in use in the shop. Uh, these are the cutting tool. They're held in place on a steel bar tool holder. So when we need to replace the cutting surface, we just replace the insert. So you'll see a variety of shapes here. And we'll talk about some of the basic ideas behind these tool holders, including boring bars and threading inserts and cutoff tools. A lot of things you're going to learn about later on, but this is just an introduction. Now, when we talk about the geometry of a cutting tool. We're really talking about what operation we're going to do. And we break our projects down into basically five different operations. We're either facing off the end, which means we're squaring it, or we're turning down the diameter along lengthwise, or perhaps we're parting and cutting the part off using a parting tool. We can also do boring, which means that we're making an existing internal hole larger or we're drilling a hole to start, or notching and grooving, which is cutting a slot. It can be on the inside or the outside of the part. We'll take a look at a short video of some of those operations here towards the end of this presentation. Now the operation we're going to do determines what type of tool we're going to use and the tools are broken into three different basic categories. First, when we're looking at a tool that's designed to cut on the outside, we have a right-hand tool. Now, this right-hand tool is made to cut from the right side as you face the lathe to the left. The way we can tell it's a right-hand tool, and this is a little counterintuitive, is that the blade is offset to the left as you look at it from above. Now that blade is offset to give it clearance to cut without hitting the part. So you'll notice the cutting tip is clear to engage into the part. So if a right hand tool points to the left as you look at it, it makes sense that a left hand tool points to the right. So a left hand tool, sorry this is a typo up here at the top, a left hand tool is made to cut from the left to the right or away from the chuck. We can identify it because the blade of the left hand tool points to the right. So the last tool we can have is one that points in neither direction and it can cut either left to right or right to left. That is a neutral tool. A neutral tool. So those are some basic tool holding. So let's look at a couple of presentations here on how we level an indexable tool holder on our tool post. And the reason we want to level the tool on the tool post is two reasons. The first is it reduces chatter. It makes it so that the tool is not vibrating uh, up and down. And that has a lot to do with the geometry, the cutting geometry of the tool. And I, I don't want to go too far into that, just to say that in order to have a smooth, stable cut, we need to have the tool at the appropriate cutting height. 
Uh, the second reason that you're going to experience when you do your first facing is we want to make a clean face cut. If I have my tool tip too high or too low, I'm going to leave a nub in the middle of the part. So let's look at a video on the leveling operation. All right, in this first video, we're gonna basically look at how we will level the tool post. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to grab a center to put in the tailstock. In this instance, we're using a dead center. Mount it in the tailstock and then grab your tool holder. Your tool holder may be a right, left, or center. Extend the tailstock out so that we can reach it with the tool tip and then move the tool tip to approximately align with the end of the center. Now that you have the tool tip aligned to the center approximately, we'll take a closer look. With the tool locked in position, take a read on it and you'll see the tip is a little bit high in that first picture. We adjust the nut to lower the tool, drop it back in, lock it, and now we can see that our tip is closer to being aligned. We want our tip to align perfectly across. So we'll make one more quick adjustment a little bit high and now drop it down and lock it and now it lines up perfectly vertical with that tip. That height will be transferred no matter what position we use the tool holder on the indexable post. Double check it and it looks great. Let's recap our big takeaways from this presentation. The first big takeaway is the types of tools. And we have three types, a right hand cutting tool, its tip points to the left, a left hand cutting tool, its tip points to the right, and a neutral tool, its tip points straight ahead. The last big takeaway we wanna uh, capture here is we always want to mount our tools and check that they align to a center in the tailstock before we start cutting. Thanks for watching.